If you want to drive your Power Apps user experience and adoption rates through the roof, implementing navigation best practices and reusable components is a great way to do that. Hi guys, my name is Michael with Bulb Digital and this is actually going to be the first of a two-part series on uh, Power Apps navigation. So in today's video we're going to be talking about navigation, um, building blocks or object types using Power Apps Studio, the website, as an example. So just all the different navigation components or building blocks. And then in the second video we're going to be talking about best practices with those in mind as well as lots of great examples of how to implement them in Power Apps. Please be sure to like and subscribe below and keep your eye on our channel for other great content. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm here at the Power Apps Studio website, and this is gonna be what we're gonna use for our guide. So as we're trying to do navigation in Power Apps, we're gonna to try to use this as inspiration and copy this and its, its uh, intent as much as possible, because um, it really does a good job here. Um, one thing I will say before we talk much further is I wanna define navigation as clicking something to reveal something else. And so, um, you know, this has implications for revealing things as big as a screen or an app or a website or as small as a little card when you click on ellipses and you get a little drop down menu. Um, so anything where you click something and something else is revealed, I'm kind of considering that navigation. So the first thing I want to kind of break down with you is what are all the navigation kind of objects or building blocks that we see here and what purpose do they generally serve? in terms of navigation. So the first one we should talk about, uh, probably no surprise, is the header. So what goes across here at the top. Um, most, if not all, of our apps would probably benefit from a header. And in terms of navigation, this, since this is what we see across all screens in our app, this is where we want to put those items to which we want to navigate from anywhere in the app. So kind of the common things. Um, breaking down the header a little bit more, we have here in the upper left corner, what uh, the Microsoft calls the app launcher, I believe. A lot of people call it the waffle menu. So if you just think about functionally what happens when you click on this, you get this nice kind of sidebar that pops out on top of the screen. And from here, uh, you can go to all the other apps within Microsoft 365. Probably most of our power apps will not need this, but it's an intriguing idea that if you have an app that's part of a series of other apps, that might be the place to put uh, you know, links to those other apps. So keep that in mind, the waffle menu. And then kind of over on this right-hand side in the header, we have things that, at least for the Power App Studio, are universal to any screen we're on. So environments, notifications, settings, help, profile. So these are all examples of things. If you use any of these in your app, uh, the header is a great place. Notice all of these, by the way, are just kind of side overlays. So you click on them and then just overlay on top of the screen. So that's, that's pretty slick. Next, we have the left menu. Uh, this goes by a lot of names, um, left menu, left navigation menu. Um, some people call it a sidebar. Um, this little icon here is the hamburger icon. Looks like a hamburger. And so this is very common. And in our apps, I think for the most part, we should stick to this for our screen navigation. So all of our screens um, that we want users to directly go to from anywhere in the app should be listed here. Um, I think it's really slick, and this can totally be done in Power Apps when you click on the hamburger icon, how the whole thing shrinks. Um, very handy, saves you some space. And notice it's responsive too. So, so everything in the rest of the screen is moving, and we can totally do that in Power Apps as well. Um, and then even within this uh, left menu here, we've got nested items, which is pretty handy. And I'll actually show you a video later where um, uh, a guy figured out how to do this. It's pretty cool. From there then, so if we have header and then left nav, the next thing is this sub nav. And so this is the thing directly below the header. And how they treat this, which I think is really slick, is these are kind of settings for whatever you're seeing on the screen currently. And while the placement and look and feel is similar, these things are unique to what we see here. So if you were in need of such a thing in your Power Apps, um, 
you know, the idea of keeping it consistent and looking the same and even things in the same place, like your search is always here, but, you know, as you click through things, you'll notice that these, you know, do actually change. Um, that's a kind of a great use of, of this sitting right below. Um, and then you'll notice just kind of some little things here uh, as far as not showing everything in the sub-nav, you know, they kind of lump things together with these little drop-down menus. <laughs> not little in that case. Um, and so this is another thing you totally can do in Power Apps, and it's a great way of consolidating, um, you know, everything you could click on so it's not overwhelming at a first glance. Right below the sub-nav, we have breadcrumbs, and these are really handy and actually can be done in Power Apps so that as you go deeper and deeper into something, you always have a way to get back to its parent, um, even if you're several layers deep into something. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is, let's see if we can get, um, let's go actually to, let's go to a table. And we're going to go inside account. Okay, tabs. This is the last thing I want to talk about, I believe. Yeah, tabs. So tabs are a great way, instead of um, navigating to a bunch of different screens, if you just have a section of your screen with similar content that you want to replace without having to do a lot of scrolling, tabs are a great way to accomplish this. So notice as I'm clicking on these tabs, pretty much up here is staying the same, but this content's being replaced and the things in our sub-nav are being replaced. So, if you're ever in doubt of how to think about navigation, think in general about the apps that you use a lot and the Microsoft 365 world in particular. They do a really good job throughout all of their apps of making um, the look and feel and functionality of these different components similar. And if we can strive in our power apps to uh, do the same, to, to, to make it consistent visually, functionally, it's going to make the user experience so pleasant and so intuitive uh, for the people using our apps because they're already used to it with the Microsoft apps. So that is what I will generally say um, as far as using this as a guide. So that concludes today's video, the first part of our two-part series. Uh, do keep your eye out for that second part, um, which will come out soon. Uh, just to recap what we talked about today, there are many navigation building blocks or object types of which great examples in the Power App Studio website. So use that as your guide and kind of take everything that we've talked about today and learn how to um, kind of glean some tips from them and actually implement them in, in video too. So keep your eye out for that. Um, a couple things I want to bring to your attention before we part ways today. First of all is we actually just released a new podcast, um, which is a great way for us to have a chance to be more conversational and to talk about things in more of a, a long-form conversation. So it's called Make Others Successful. Uh, so go check that out. Um, you should find our first episode there, um, all the major places where you can find podcasts. The second thing I want to um, shout out real quick is that on our website, we have a new learning center where all of our uh, blogs and videos and articles and the things we've been working on putting out in the last um, half year or longer um, are all um, really nicely organized and categorized by the, the type of software that you're looking to use. Like you can filter by Power Apps or SharePoint or Teams or by the kind of concept you're looking for like business apps or communication collaboration. So go check that out. Um, I think that's it for today and uh, we'll see you in the next video.